Hi Rose, yeah, I'm I'm Lever Person and I play uh, guitar and synth for Mike Lindsay in the band Cheek Mountain Thief. Oh. And yeah, we're here in Isley. Mm. <laughs> which is his hometown. Which is his hometown, yeah. yeah. Just had a which is uh it's very it's very much different from from where the town I'm from originally. Yeah, which is which is uh Stikisolmur in, in Iceland. It's, Say uh, that again. Stikisolmur. <laughs> it's a small it's a it's a fisherman village, population of twelve hundred people. Yeah. And uh, yeah, as I said, it's very different from, from this. Just a yeah, small fishing village in Iceland. So, for example, we're, we're here at Eastleigh and mm. we're standing backstage and we're surrounded by bricks and we can hear the echo of the concert. Yeah. If we were in... What's that? Stick is on with. Yeah. <laughs> Where would we be standing? Well, right now, Monday night. Yeah. I don't know. Probably just... Probably just... Uh, by the harbour looking at some birds or something. <laughs> really? Yeah, we don't have a lot of concerts there or anything. And would it be light or dark? It's, it's about similar to here now, okay. this, this time of year. Yeah. yeah. But uh, we've just uh, come out of the uh, uh, of a full three month period of uh, continuous daylight over there. Yeah, it gets you pretty crazy. <laughs> <laughs> it does it? Yeah. <laughs> Why? Um, well, for first, you don't, uh, you can't really tell if it's uh, day or night, so you tend to tend to either stay up really late or uh, get up super late, <laughs> or whatever. It doesn't really matter, and it kind of, uh, I think that's a very, uh, that, that's something in uh, in the character of the Icelandic people that they are, they are very energetic at like some periods of time, like. For, for example, during the summer, but in the winter everything is so much slower. And uh, as I'm sure uh, Mike has probably told you this, but he, when he was making the record in, in the Husavik, which is uh, another village in Iceland, he was there in the, in the winter time. And uh, a society like Husavik in the winter time was very slow. You know, go see some people uh, at the pub on Saturday nights. And uh, that's probably it for social, you know. So, what do you do the rest of the time in the winter? Uh, we would we would uh, go fishing or ride our snowmobiles or uh, drive our jeeps up to the mountain or whatever, whatever you have, you know. It's a uh, you you are very uh, you're very bound with nature if you're an Icelander, yeah. and that's where people go to seek inspiration and uh, yeah and to uh, you know what do you say not not kill time but you know pass their time. It's normally re uh, how people pass their time is is normally heavily related to uh, nature in some way. Um, what about for you, for example? Well, I've been living in the city of Reykjavik for the last few years, and uh, it's a bit different there. Uh, mm. We, uh, you could go see a see a good concert, or uh, I'm I'm pretty heavily into the uh, like modern art, like visual arts, uh, stuff like that. So it's uh, it's very uh, it's very prosperous in in that department. The uh... um, do you have the Northern Lights? Yes. It's yeah. uh, well, Reykjavik, the capital, is not the uh, it's not the maybe the optimal spot to see the Northern Lights. But say, for example, you go go to the countryside or to your summer house or something. Which, by the way, every Icelander has a summer house pretty much. Then you can just uh, yeah, in the winter, see the Northern Lights. Um, what does it feel like to see the Northern Lights? Well, it makes you feel kind of uh, kind of insignificant and small in the, in the context with nature, but also, of course, makes you feel very uh, you know very great to be a part of something uh, so magnificent and to be like bound with nature. You know? Yeah, wow. Well, that's my perspective, at least. Something that Mike said earlier that was really interesting was. He mentioned um, about the evidence of the prehistoric 
era right. in the landscape. Mm. Is that something you think about? Well, in uh, from a from the uh, perspective of a uh, geologist, for example, uh, Iceland is a very is a, is a very young country, as they say. It's, uh, we have a lot of active volcanoes, and uh, it's very uh, it's very easy to, easy to see how the land has been has been created over over the over the centuries. So if you uh, so so people who are f familiar with that subject of like geometry. And uh, yeah, I don't, I don't really know where I'm going with this, but yeah, well, prehistoric, it's definitely there. Yeah. Yeah. Because when we see something prehistoric, we're not used to it, because we're used to this. Yeah. Right. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You it's... also have to you have to learn how to absorb, absorb. You know. Yeah. So. How do you? I, I, you know, I can I can only imagine that for Mike coming from somewhere like here, it is it is very different. It is like you come there and it's like you have landed on the moon, you know, <laughs> or or some other planet or something. It's it's so totally different than anywhere else, really. And uh, I I didn't I didn't realize this until I was like in my adult years when I started traveling the world and, and such. But coming back there, I was like. All of a sudden, it, it hit me, and I was blown away by how very different from from anything else it really is. Yeah. So I can only imagine that for, for him coming from here, uh, it must have been, yeah, maybe uh, like going to outer space or to a, another planet. Or something. The landscape is very, very intense, and uh, you know, and harsh, and the, the weather's can be very harsh as well, and and. Uh, you might even say that about Icelanders uh, that they are, they are, uh, they are. Well, how do you say? Uh, like it, it reflects in their character. Yeah. How? That they can they can be very uh, harsh and uh, uh, un impolite. Some some would even say, but uh, once you get to know them, like like right down to their core and become their friends and stuff you most most people realize that they are uh, well almost all of them kind of creative and sweet good friends <laughs> of their friends yeah because what one of the things that I'm interested in is the creative link between the landscape mm. and the artistic heart yeah uh, well, yeah, on, on that subject, it's like, it is very different, as I said before, it's different from, from anywhere else, and, and you can probably sense that in the music of the mm -hmm. artists, like, can. for example, Björk, she is, she is just one in a, one in a million, there's, there's nobody like her out there, and uh, I think it has a lot to do with the, uh, with the energy and the surroundings, you know, around her growing up, and how that would have an, an effect on on her and uh, her uh, creativity. She seems free. Yeah. Yeah. She's a free spirit. Yeah. Truly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's a very rare quality. It is. Yeah. Yeah. Do you see that in Iceland, in Icelandic people? Do you see that that they are free spirited? Yeah. Uh, I would not say that was that would be a very like the general Icelander wouldn't be very much of a free spirit, but definitely people that are working in the creative industries and the and the art industries, I would say that yeah they they would. Many of them would have that quality about them. Well, thank you very much. <laughs>